Hello everyone, it's Jack here and welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast and uh, today we're going to be doing a few things um, including making a jetpack and an extractor um, I want an extractor because we've got lots and lots of this rubber wood and um, then we can extract that into rubber to make cable and uh, I also want a jetpack so I can fly around and sort of show you the area a lot better than having to use ender pills and stuff like that so the first thing we're going to do, I, you'll notice I've got a few materials in my inventory ready to make the stuff but the first thing we're going to do is head through to our little mistcraft world over here and uh, I'm going to show you what I've been doing in between episodes because last episode I made a mining turtle and started making these little quarries over here well uh, two of these have finished and gone down to bedrock so uh, let's uh, hop over to one of these and I'll uh, show you how they are, I can hear a zombie doesn't matter though, so these ones over here have gone all the way down to bedrock and then if I get down the bottom of here hopefully without dying um, basically what I did to get the turtles to go through the lava is I just placed a bucket of water and let them mine through it and uh, they seem to be going okay and it's left an obsidian board around where the lava is so I know not to mine there. So let's head down here and I'll show you what else I've done. So along with having them excavate a 10x10 10 10 quarry, I also had them um, excavate a 100 long tunnel and it didn't really find that much except you can see this part of one of the wooden tendrils from uh, our special world here. Um, but it didn't actually find any diamonds or anything like that, so I might set up them up to do like a few tunnels. Uh, but for now, we've got a couple of diamonds. Uh, not much more than we had last episode. We've got about nine or ten now. Uh, but it's still a decent amount to be getting on with and doing some more stuff. And hopefully soon, uh, when we get up top, I'll show you what else we're going to do. Because I plan on setting up the mining turtle that we've got to go and mine out these two bits over here. So let's get out and... Uh, We'll get over there. So these fences are basically to stop me walking down these by accident or if I get shot by a skeleton or anything like that I don't fall down and die. And this one here and this one over here is going to have a mining turtle set up in it. It's going to use the same one but um, yeah we're going to set mining turtles up in each of these um, paddocks or pens or whatever you're going to call them. Uh, we're going to set mining turtles up in there and hopefully they can uh, go down to bedrock fairly easily. Also um, this, these here took about an hour and a half for the mining turtle to go from the surface all the way down to bedrock, which, yeah, was a very long time. I'm sort of an impatient person, and, um, that did take a while, but the stuff what we got is pretty good, and I've laid out a selection of chests here, um, for the random cobblestone and random things that we get, and, um, I'm gonna leave this here until we need it, and then we can take it back through, and... One thing I'm going to do is I'll take this some of this timber through. I basically spent the time I had while the quarries were going chopping down these wooden tendrils to get loads of timber. So yeah, let's head back through and we'll get started crafting our stuff. So as I said earlier, I've already prepared some stuff ready to go and yeah, that was a little bit of lag there. It always lags a little bit as you go through the miscraft portals because bear in mind it's loading an entire new world all over again. Uh, so... Um, yeah, so what we're going to need is we're going to need to make the extractor first. And the reason I want to make that first is I want to have that set up going and uh, making all of our rubber for the rubber wood. Uh, sorry, extracting all the rubber from the rubber wood. So let's go ahead and uh, get started doing that. So let's bring up the extractor. Uh, here we go. So uh, there's two types. This one's basically an upgraded version of this. But for now, we're just going to make this. And uh, one second. Uh, hi. Uh, just recording... Okay, um, so yeah, as I was saying, uh, this is basically an upgraded version of this, and if you've watched my Tech It series, you'll probably uh, already know about this. Uh, <laughs> holy YouTube, okay. So um, yeah, we're going to need four tree taps, machine block, and electronic circuit, so uh, let's go ahead, we'll make the electronic circuit first, and uh, seeing as we're going to need a few copper cables for the jetpack and stuff like that, I'll go and make quite a few. And uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, we're going to need a machine block, which is just this. And we're going to need some timber for tree taps, which, uh, if I can remember rightly, because I think they changed the recipe. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, let's hover over this and press R. Okay, it's timber. I tried to make it earlier with the um, redwood planks, and for some reason the redwood planks don't work when normal wood does. It's a little bit confusing. Um, but there we go, some tree taps. I could have actually just repaired that one, but never mind, never mind. So... Okay, so we're going to need our electronic circuit first, so let's go ahead and bring the recipe up for this. It's just a little bit of redstone and refined iron. And I don't know, I like recording this way with uh, everything prepared before the episode, and then we're not like hu uh, hurrying from chest to chest to chest. It's a little bit annoying that way. So let's go ahead, we'll put this here. We'll surround it by tree taps, and that should give us our extractor. 
and uh, then we can start extracting the rubber from the rubber wood and uh, let's put it here for now we are gonna have to go ahead and uh, make a wrench soon as well which hopefully I can uh, do this episode I might actually pinch a couple of bits of tin and shove them in a furnace I know in fact I should really ex um, macerate them shouldn't I okay there we go let's leave that to macerate and uh, we want the ores going back in here there we go and this iron can actually be going and smelting while we're waiting I don't see why not so um yeah where was we so we've made our extractor we can go ahead pop a stack of rubber wood in the top of here and get this going there we go and that should extract into uh, I think that extracts straight to rubber um, I'm not sure if that's getting power at the moment to be honest I think yeah we are going to have to make a wrench so uh, let's go ahead grab a little bit more copper and we'll start smelting that in here oh good some's already been done nice 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 uh, we'll grab a little bit more coal and uh, we'll put this in here so we want eight I think it's eight bits for us up a uh, full stack uh, well we'll put the entire lot in why not so okay so that irons going We've got some tin going here so all we need really need is four bits of tin so we don't need the iron at the moment so we can put that in there and I suppose I could just go ahead and pop together another furnace while we're waiting and then this iron can be in a separate furnace these furnaces are cheap they're just cobblestone and we're we're pretty much swimming in cobblestone at the moment we don't need any so uh, yeah so uh, we need eight of that we can shove this in here and put this uh, iron dust up there and uh, we should all be rocking and rolling so there's some tin and let's just check that this is the right way to do it so I think it's copper ingots and that will make bronze oh and we don't need as much as I thought brilliant so let's go ahead and make our wrench and that means we can move the machines now there is a possibility of us losing our um, machine when we pick it up with this wrench and the only way to do that uh, like combat that is to make an electric wrench uh, which is let's have a look if it's not too expensive I can't quite remember the uh, crafting recipe for it but if it's not that expensive I could go ahead and make one now so uh, electric wrench is a battery and electronic cell I suppose we can get away with using the wrench for now oh I'm always nervous of them breaking I will admit that so I tell you what let's pick this up as well our macerator and we'll put a little bit of cable there and how much uh, resin have we got let's have a look we have got five in here and as soon as the extractor's going, we should get a few more. So I tell you what, we can do that. And then we can go ahead and we can actually be sneaky about this. We can do this a better way. So if we break a couple of holes here, uh, we can pop this output to here. And run ourselves our cable behind. And just plug it all in this way. And have the cable hidden. Hidden cable in for the win. So, okay, so there's our macerator. So we can put some ores in there. And I'm guessing our bat box is empty. Yes, it is. Okay, so we'll put some coal in the generator to get that charging up. And I really want to go to like a more efficient power source soon. I'm thinking of going towards um, solar. Um, just because I think solar is going to be the way to go really. Because I've done nuclear on Tekkit. I've done geothermal on Tekkit. And I've not really done anything with solar panels. And I think solar panels are just going to be a nice environmental way of um, getting us power for our machines. So that should all be good. So here's our extract. We can put the rubber wood up top. Hopefully that will be uh, extracting the extractiness of the extractor. And um, that should all be good. So we can get working on the stuff for our jetpack now. So uh, let's go ahead finish the rest of this off by uh, writing electric jetpack. And um, there we go. So first of all we're going to need a battery box. Which is uh, this. Now we're going to need batteries. Uh, which I think are tin I'm not entirely sure I did make them earlier but I've already forgotten so we're gonna need I think it was okay I've already forgotten don't worry jetpack uh, three of these so we should be good to go on that one because we've got three copper cables we just need a little bit of tin which should be done in one of these got that uh, let's have a look we've got some tin dust there which we can put on to smell and we can take the rest of this out while we're waiting and um, we can pop this in here and as soon as the rest of that tin dust is done we're ready to go ahead and make the batteries for our bat box uh, meanwhile while we're waiting we could actually go ahead and make our electronic circuit oh no we haven't got enough cables I'm gonna have to wait very impatient aren't I okay so we'll grab some copper 
We'll make some more of these copper cables ready to go. So we're going to need that and we're going to need this up top. There we go, that's six. It should give us enough to make an electronic circuit, which is that and that. And a redstone. Oh, it's the other way around. I always forget. It's one thing that always muddles me up. The electronic circuits are always a little bit confusing to craft. Um, so there we go, six of that. And we need... Okay, we're going to have to wait till we've got 12, I think. So that means we're going to have to grab some more of this tin dust, put the rest of it in the furnace, and um, then we should all be good to go. So is there anything else we need for this? We need an advanced electronic circuit, redstone, lapis lazuli, and glowstone, which we've all got. Uh, copper cables, oh, we need an advanced circuit. We've got that as well. So we can turn this into an advanced electronic circuit. So let's uh, bring ourselves our crafting guide up over here. Pop this around with redstone on the corners and a little bit of lapis lazuli in the middle. And uh, there we go, that's uh, our advanced electronic circuit. Now all we have to do is make our battery box. Hopefully we've got enough tin now to do that. So we just need to split that there. And we only need three. Now, yes, I haven't got enough, have I? Okay, so we've got one battery for now. We could do with like two more tin ingots and we should all be good. So, uh, yeah, in fact, I might actually bring some more of this tin dust over while we're waiting, just in case we haven't got enough. So, uh, yeah, that's all our stuff smelting. I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep this base. I like it, but I want to move to something more luxurious. And I'm not sure if I want to build it in one of the Mistcraft worlds. I think I'm going to keep it in the main world itself, but I'm not sure what I'm going to build yet. It's something what I'm thinking about, because I've already built things like factories and all stuff like that in other series, and... I don't know, I, I kind of like to do something different. I was thinking of building like an eco house, and that's why I was thinking of going with the solar panels, just because I thought it was something different, what I hadn't really seen many other people doing. It sounded kind of cool. So we're missing something for our battery box. And, oh yeah, it's a copper cable. Okay, that's not too bad. At least we can get that back. So we're going to need a little bit more of this uh, uh, rubber, and we're going to need to make a few more copper cables, because unfortunately we ran out. So that there. And we need to surround this by wood with batteries along the middle line of it, uh, which is there. So that is a bat box now. So hopefully we've got everything we need to complete our jetpack. So that's there, that's there, and we've got a uh, thing there, and that is our jetpack. Now someone actually said that I can charge it in the bat box, which hopefully I can. It will drain the power because obviously the jetpack will take 30,000 EU. And the battery box only holds 40,000. That's why it's a good idea to use something like an MFE or an MFSU to charge it. Just because it's not using all your power up. But hopefully this way we should be good. Now, I've heard that if you run the jetpack on hover mode, it will actually take up less power. I'm not sure how you put it on hover mode. I think it's M, but I'm not sure. Um, I've rebound some of the keys, so I'm not sure if I'm uh, right on that or if I'm wrong. Uh, we'll all see in good time. So... I suppose we can drop all of our stuff off now we've got a jetpack. We can go for a little bit of a fly around our surroundings. I can show you what's going on. And um, then probably next episode we can take a tour of spawn. Um, because I don't think you've seen spawn. In fact, I'm pretty sure you haven't. Uh, so where can we drop our tools off? I want a nice chest which is located for our tools and stuff like that. So I suppose we can put it in here. We'll grab ourselves some more food from our mushroom uh, over here. And... We will fill it, uh, finish off a stack of cobblestone, so we've got that on us. We'll get a full stack of wood. There we go. So if we need to make base anywhere, we've got it. We can drop the shears off. We don't need that. And that should be it. Now, what have we got in our miner's backpack? We've got a little bit of tin left over. So as soon as I've got this left over, I can put this in our macerator. So I think there's tin in there. Yes, there is. And pick that back up because we don't want to lose it. And we can drop our tree tap off. That was a very long... Uh, talking session but yeah time to go and hopefully is it night time and okay it's night time let's have a look is it just gone night time but as you can see with the jetpack you just literally hold space and uh, you fly you've got to be very careful that you don't fall because I think you will take damage so let's try it near our front door so if we do die with okay so I think yes we do take damage so as soon as we take damage there is something else I'm going to make now, you could just make rubber boots. Now, these are part of, I think, industrial craft. And these basically take away your fall damage, but they really don't last very long at all. Now, the cool thing about Feed the Beast is there's an extra mod called the Portal uh, mod. And that adds things like turrets, aerial faith plates, even a little radio. And I'm not sure how you make the radio, actually. Uh, we'll have a look. 
Radio. Oh, it's just a music disc. And then we've got to get the music disc. Which is difficult to get. So, okay. Well, we'll get that another time. So, I think, for now, we don't want full damage from the um, jetpack. So, we want something to get rid of that. And, as I was saying, the portal gun mod adds lots of stuff from portal. Now, it adds something cool called these long fall boots. Now, I haven't actually looked up the recipe for these. Uh, so, we'll have to have a look now. There's an individual boot, which is quite... Uh, strange. I think you need two individual boots and they're obsidian iron. Oh wow, that is cheap. I thought that would have cost more. So we'll grab four of that. Four obsidian. And we'll grab some iron. We'll go ahead and make some of these long fall boots. So let's uh, put lines of iron down either side. So that's two boots, which we put together to make long fall boots. And, uh, oh, okay, we can put the rest of this iron away. We can pop these boots on. Now, I think that you can jump higher with these boots. I'm not entirely sure. It seems like it. I've not. Let's. Oh, what the hell? I've got two jetpacks. That is very strange. Okay, I'm just gonna try logging on and off and see if it's uh, just a bug. Back in a minute. Okay then. So uh, I'm back now, and it turns out that was just a little uh, client side bug. So uh, that's all because I didn't want to have accidentally uh, cheated in two jetpacks. Because uh, yeah, that would have been a. A bad mistake. So uh, let's go ahead, pop our jet. In fact, we'll pop our full boots on first. We'll see if we can jump higher. It seems a little bit that way, but it's probably just me thinking that. So uh, let's go ahead. We'll fly outside, and we've actually got to light outside of our base up a little bit, prevent mobs spawning and blowing up our base because that would be bad. We've already had a few creeper explosions nearby, and yeah, it's not good. So yeah, I think I want to put this on hover mode. So um. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead look how you put this on hover mode because I can't actually remember. We'll go inside as well so we don't get attacked by mobs in the meanwhile. Let's put a torch up top. Oh, I can feel a creeper coming behind me. We don't want to die. No. Oh. I didn't take any damage there, but I sort of lost half of our base. Very bad idea. Very bad indeed. So, this is going to be a little repair job for us to do. Oh, creeper problems. Creeper problems all day and all night. Okay, let's get back inside and I'll repair that in the daytime. So, um, I'm going to go ahead, check how you uh, use hover mode on the jetpack. And I'll also repair that little bit of damage outside. And then I'll be right back. Okay then, so I'm back now and uh, I'm just going to head and put top to our jetpack in the bat box. Just to, uh, so it's fully ready for us to uh, have a bit of a fly around. And uh, thanks to uh, Flair, or is it Flair? Yes, it is Flair. Um, <laughs> thanks to uh, Flair, who's on the server, he uh, reminded me that um, the hover mode is G for Feed the Beast. You just have to rebind the controls because, for some reason, as default, it's the same as the map key. The It's default as M, and uh, it stops working because of the map. So, yeah, the jetpack on hover mode will uh, last for a bit longer, and um, I think you'll get about an extra one and a half, probably two minutes out of it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, apparently, it's like 215 seconds not on hover mode, and then... It's about um, 280 on hover mode. I think that's about right. I might be wrong though. And uh, yeah, I've also gone and finished uh, patching this up and I've lit the area up the best I can just so nothing spawns. So yeah, on hover mode, you don't fly as quickly, but um, it lasts longer and it's fine for what I want. You can just go ahead and tap the jetpack a little bit as you're flying and get around. It's not as good as the flying rings from Equivalent Exchange, but obviously uh, he isn't in this mod pack yet. So um, yeah, we've got to make do with what we've got. And I kind of like the jetpack. It's a... Uh, not just like free energy you've got to actually pay to fly which is good so yeah this is the surroundings of our base we're in a pretty awesome mountain biome and i was thinking seeing as i wanted to go for something like an eco house style because that feels like a cool idea like an eco factory something like that i thought we'd build into all the mountainside to make use of the landscape and you'll notice there's some lava over here so i could always use geothermal if i needed a, a bit better power source um, we've also got lots of lava lakes down the ravine as well, which is all good. And you'll see around us, we've got a snow biome surrounding that side of the mountain biome, which is nicely um, hidden by this nice mountain range over here. And, well, I sound like I'm doing a uh, documentary for the Geography Channel. Um, but yeah, and over this way, I want to show you this. So let's go off hover mode a second so we can fly super quick. So I think while we're flying, we press G. Yes, well, there we go. And it's not actually as good as I thought. But yeah, we might as well leave it on G. So that's... There we go, enabled. How much have we got left? Okay, it is using quite a bit. But hopefully we don't get too far from home. I've got my nice waypoint there. So uh, I don't lose um, place. 
So yeah, so over this way, you'll see um, that these mountain ranges sort of flatten out into this uh, foresty area and then they keep going. So we're in a really nice area to uh, live in. Over there's a bit more of the snow biome and it sort of like circles around us. And then way over in that way is the plains biome where I think um, someone else has set up their base. I think it might be Minecraft Mare's base, but I'm not sure entirely. Um, that's all I've heard anyway. And um, then over towards that way is where I got all the swamp trees from, which I suppose we can uh, we can drop down if we can get on land and we can go for a bit of a stroll. So uh, let's take our jetpack a second because we're not going to need it just for now. Uh, in fact, we are going to need it to get down from here. In fact, we've got long fall boots on. What do we need? We can jump. We're in portal. hey -oh! Do we take... Oh, good. No damage whatsoever. And do they... Oh, they're pretty much... They've got no damage scale. Awesome source. So, um, it looks like long fall boots are like the best thing for us to make. A lot better than rubber boots. So, yeah, we'll head over in this direction. I'll show you where I've been getting all like the rubber trees from and all that type of stuff. And then I think we'll wrap the episode up there. Um, just because, well, I'm not sure how long it's been. I'm trying to keep these like fairly short at the beginning of the series. Just as a nice like way of introducing the series to everyone. Because like 30 minute long episodes are a bit too much. So, yeah, this is uh, someone else's base over here, as I said earlier. They've been using the mining turtles as well, and they've got like a nice little trench over there, which is probably what I'm going to do um, in my other Mistcraft world, and uh, do something like this. I might do anyway. Seems like the best way to go, and then you don't like have any bits of uh, wall in between the uh, where the turtles have been quarrying out. So let's head over this way, and I'll show you. So over this way is like a nice. I've not actually seen one of these biomes before before I like started this mod pack series. Um, and this is actually a green swamp land. It's part of what um, uh, what's it called? Is it extra biomes XL? I think. And it's part of what that adds. And it's a really really nice biome. I wish these were in the vanilla game to be honest. They're just so nice. And this is where I've been getting all the rubber trees from. Just see their rubber trees over there. If you didn't already know, they've got like three high. They look like a normal oak, but. They've got like three high stacks of leaves on the top and they've got like this yellow sticky resin on the side. So over this way as well is the pine forest and that's basically uh, the biomes that surround our like nearby proximity. Obviously we're stuck in our mountain range which we can sort of do a lot with with the building style and all that type of stuff. So yeah I think that's pretty much it. I am tempted to go back home quickly and uh, I'm thinking I'm going to make a... Um, I was going to make an electronic uh, mining drill. But, but to be honest, I don't like having to charge them up constantly. I know you can get like bat packs and lap packs and all stuff like that, but charging a mining drill up is sort of annoying, so I might leave that. And whose portal is that? Should I jump through to the other land? Okay, let's just eat up quickly. I don't know what to expect. I really don't know what to expect. Random portals everywhere. So let's uh, hop back in here, sort our inventory quickly. Get the sword ready. Jump it. Well, that was it. That was that was a very anticlimactic ending, wasn't it? Jump into a portal, and then the other side hasn't been placed. So, oh, okay. We don't want to fall down into a cave. We could do with our jetpack back on when we uh, get back over to the mountains. As I say, we can run over these plains. They're not too bad. So, uh, yeah, that's about it for this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna head quickly back home and. Um, I will uh, wrap the episode up when I get there, so uh, see you very, very shortly. Okay then, so we're nearly back home and I just thought I'd point this out. So this is our little um, mountain that we are building our house in. Now I'm very tempted to move over there, that's probably a possibility, but I don't like having to see the snow biome, it bugs me. So I might either move over to that mountain over there, or stay here and the plan I'm gonna do is build all these little rooms in the mountain itself and try and use the um, shape of the mountain and we'll have like windows shaped to, to the same where the stone was and all stuff like that and that's what I'm planning on doing so let's try and get back inside quickly okay then sorry about just randomly disappearing there I started coughing again and um, yeah I didn't want that to be in the video so I just stopped recording for a second so uh, yeah we're back at base and uh, I'm about to wrap today's episode up one thing I just want to show you beforehand are these. Now, these are the solar panels that I sort of want to make for our base. Now, the reason I'm showing you them now is because I'm not sure if I've got enough resources to make them. So, they need two electronic circuits either side. Now, you can use pretty much anything for this. 
you use the electron tubes, the iron ore gate, the iron and gate, so and pretty much anything like that. So I think I'm going to be using electronic circuits. I think there might be a cheaper way to do it as well, like the iron and gates. If you haven't got copper, you can just use the iron and it does the same thing. You get four for that actually. Hmm. I'll have to figure out the cheapest way to do that. If anyone knows the cheapest way to actually make this, I think that looks fairly cheap because you get four for each one, so that's enough for two solar panels. So that makes it very cheap. Hmm, interesting. Uh, you also need a generator and a carbon plate, so that means we're going to have to get a compressor and lots of coal, uh, which we're probably going to have to uh, slowly work towards. I might run our mining turtles in the separate world for a little while to get some uh, resources, or I might just go manually mining for coal. So yeah, we're going to need generators, carbon plates. Silicon cells mean we're going to need an industrial centrifuge, and we're also going to need glass paints, so they might be a little bit out of reach for now. I'll see what I can do in between episodes, gathering resources and stuff like that. As I say, at the moment, we've got plenty, in fact, we've got one and a half stacks of coal. I could always use charcoal, uh, but yeah, that's um, something we're going to have to think about and how we're going to do this. So yeah, I'm going to wrap the episode up here. Hopefully next episode I can build the machines to start working towards solar power. And then after that, we can uh, start working on some mistcraft stuff. Because I want to create a flat land world for all my quarries and mining turtles. Because this world that I've currently got here is very like uneven. And you'll see here where I put these, I've been leveling them out. But it's just it's a lot of work just to run the quarries. And I think I want a flat land world for that. And um, that's one thing I want to do with Mistcraft. So that's something we're going to be uh, working on in a few episodes time. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of stuff to do for it. And... Uh, yeah, I hope you're looking forward to it. So yeah, I'll see you all on the next episode. If you enjoyed this, like would be super awesome. It does help out a lot. And if you've got anyone else who likes Minecraft, feel free to share this video with them as it helps my channel get out there and uh, helps me uh, find uh, new people who enjoy my videos. And I'll see you all on the next uh, episode. So bye and cue the awesome music.